Hi, Chef Adam Moore, back with some great new tips for you. You've decided to go and buy your professional knife set for home. Now, this is my most asked question about buying tools. Do not ask me the favorite brands and things like that because it's personal preference. Today, I'm not endorsing any brand, but what I wanted to show you was if you're getting knives for your home selection, for at home use, you can get some professional knives. Now there's some many great places like Kitchen Warehouse, Victoria's Basement, or House. Great places to buy knives. Now if you wanna buy and upgrade your knife set at home from your standard knives that are blunt, that are not sharp, that are not are falling apart, this is some tips for you. Now there is many block options or individual knives out there. Now I want to stress, each brand is quite different. There's Japanese brands that you know, are quite smaller and more precise. There's Australian brands. There's also brands that you know and trust in your kitchen. So grab the brand that you feel right. Now, learning about knives is very important because there's a couple of safety tips we must talk about before we even talk about the advantages of each knife. Every time you use a knife in the kitchen, whether you're using a wooden board, whether you're using a, a plastic board, it doesn't matter at home. We're gonna get a dishcloth, a clean dishcloth. It's wet, right? Nice and wet. Always, at home, doesn't matter if you've got marble, doesn't matter if you've got laminex, whatever you're gonna do, you put that wet cloth underneath your board. What that does, it stops it moving. And the wet board, look, it's only moving and it's on the cloth at the moment, but I can tell you now there's some resistance there. That is the most important lesson I can show you straight away. Always do that. Now the great thing is, after you're finished, you can actually use that wet cloth to wipe down, which is fantastic. And don't forget those cloths break down in your compost bin, and fantastic, you can put them in there. Now, what do you get in a knife set? Now, the more you go up, the more you spend, the more steak knives you get. Here is the basic principles of knives. We have essentially a chef's knife or a cook's knife. And this one, they, they come in different sizes. Some are a little bit longer, some are a little bit wider, but this is a chef's or a cook knife. I'm gonna show you the advantage of this one. This one, and the, don't worry about the brand, these are not my chef's knives. These are just a brand I picked up, a generic brand, it doesn't mean anything. This is like a Sentoku uh, Japanese style knife. You've got the nice little beveled edges, sometimes you have the Damascus steel. What's the difference between these we're gonna talk about in a second? Of course, a serrated knife. Now this comes with different usages. You have also different bevels. So the bevel is how jagged it is. And it doesn't matter. Some are nice and flat and long. Some are short and sharp. And they all have different purposes. A serrated knife we'll talk about as well. This is normally a utility knife. It's either sharp, as in beveled edges, or it's just a straight blade. You normally find this in most kits. The other one, that tiny little one, is a paring knife. And we'll talk about that in as well. But just other things to remember in your kits, a pair of kitchen scissors is fantastic, it's useful, and there's lots of things we can do, and we'll talk about that. And if you're really serious about it, going upgrading to a professional knife set or a knife set for home, get a knife sharpener. You can also get a stone, but if you're not comfortable in that, these knife sharpeners help for people at home until you get someone, to a professional, to sharpen them. Now, each knife has its own usage. So if I got this paring knife and decided to cut the skin off my pumpkin, I'm actually probably doing a lot of injustice because it's sharp, it's pointy, most knives are sharp, but if I'm pushing down, I'm using force. And the worst thing is, I don't want to use force. Hence, why we use a chef or a cook knife. And that is to chop, slice, or dice. 
we're going to get a potato, whether it be pumpkin, it could be anything. And look, a nice, sharp knife makes clean incisions. And the, and the potato just falls off the plate. Now, I'm going to show you something. They say cat's claw. Okay? Cat's claw. You're holding the potato. And see how the knife is running off my fingers? That's called cat's claw. Because if I go like this, I'm going to cut myself. Right? And some of the worst damage is from blunt knives, because you're using extra force. And yes, all chefs have cut themselves when they've used knives, but don't be afraid of the knife. Do not wave it around like I'm doing there. Always hold a knife like that. And also, if you're holding, handing it to someone, hand to them, right? Like that, so that they can take, and that's away from you. If you're carrying it down by your side, like so, the blade is away from you. Do not go swinging it by the way, because it causes damage, and it could also end in the war. This is to be held like that. The other thing with this knife is to don't stick it in the board like that. You break the tips off, you do a lot of damage to your knives. Do not drop them. Now, we haven't gone through the range yet. One of the biggest, biggest no-nos with chef's knives, or any knives at home, do not ever put them in the dishwasher, please. No matter how much you've spent, no matter how much less you've spent, it doesn't matter. Do not put them in the dishwasher. When you put them in the dishwasher, you also blunt that perfect blade. Do not blunt your blades. Do not put them in the dishwasher. Warm, soapy water, clean your knives. Dry them properly. Put them back in the knife block if they've got them. A, knife, a metallic knife holder or in the drawers that you've got. So, a chef's knife, great. And so using that cat's claw, I'll just use that from the side. And as I'm moving my fingers back, I get nice control on the board. My board is not moving, and the chef's knife is fantastic for larger items. Also chopping, lots of chopping, so you can get your herbs, clean your board, pick your herbs, and if you wanted to, you can do lots of chopping. Okay. So just put that to the side. That is your chef's knife. That is the first important knife that you need in your box. A Sentoko, a Japanese knife. They are very popular because Japanese steel is a little bit harder. Um, they're a different, they're not a stainless steel normally, and they're normally handcrafted or designed and more durable. Now, just to show you too, this is a knife with rivets. And then we've got our tang of the knife. Look for a knife that's comfortable in the hand when you're getting it. Don't worry about the Sentoku, but it's gotta be, I've got big hands, so I need a bigger knife. If you've got a smaller knife, for example, you need something that you can hold. The other thing is too, just to show you, balance of the knife. If your knife balances, these ones don't at the moment, but I'll just show you something. If your knife balances perfectly, then it's going to be beautiful to cut with. A Sintoku is also mainly for precision cutting. So we're going to get our friend the potato again. This is not a lesson how to cut, okay? This is a lesson. So if we're going to use our Sintoku, that cat's claw, I'm moving my fingers back. And I'm just doing a nice little precision cut. Really simple stuff. A Sentoku is fantastic. It's normally smaller than a, um, a chef's knife or a cook knife, as you can see in these ones. The blade is a little bit thinner and always rounded at the end and sometimes beveled in the middle there. It's so precision. You're great for cutting fish, also all that as well. A saw knife, a bladed serrated knife. Now, this is great for bread. So if you're cutting into your bread, don't try and use it on the potato because it just slides off. What you want to do is use this like a saw into some bread, saw bread. This is a great ham slicer if you don't have one of those electric ones. Also, 
If your knife is blunt, hopefully it's not blunt because you need a sharp knife. It's great for things like tomatoes as well, okay? So don't stress about the serrated, but the serrated is a common one that you need. A utility, whether it's straight or sharpened, it's for smaller things, smaller vegetables, more precision, smaller, for, smaller knife, smaller vegetable, so therefore we can cut and we do stuff. It's a utility knife. It should be your most commonly used knife for smaller vegetable prep, even trimming off some meat. You can sometimes get um, meat knives in there, but at the moment, these are the basic knives you need. A paring knife. Now, paring knives are great for hulling out strawberries, or if you've got the green bit in the tomato, the nightshade plant, we can do that. We can also score the tomato. It's great for cutting smaller fruits, like strawberries. And also, a paring knife is for smaller, petite jobs in the kitchen, and each knife is sharp. We talked about scissors. Now, a couple of things with scissors. They have a nice can opener at the base. The old school can opener, if you don't know how to use it, ask mum and dad, and they'll show you how to do it. Now, scissors are great for cutting herbs in the garden. Really simple. Scissors are also fantastic for cutting down the chicken bones and cutting around. So cutting down the chicken, you get that lovely, nice, clean cut. Scissors are fantastic. Now scissors also need to be sharpened. Now here is our knife sharpener. Now this, this one is interesting. It's got two two blades, a ceramic one, I'll tell you what that's for, and it's a V cut in there, you can just see there. And then there's one here you can't see in here because it's dark, it's a V cut as well, but it's dark. This is for knives, this is for sharpened scissor blades. Also the ceramic is good for your serrated knives. Now you can get a pair of scissors that can separate, but some stay like this, and if you're going to sharpen them, I'm going to show you. You run your knife or your scissors, this is the scissor blade, and you sharpen them. Do not be afraid. I'm only holding that up. By the way, it should be on the bench, and you're making that nice sound. Okay, I've got a wobbly table. But you do that. Now, the other thing is to make sure you wash them. Do not rub them. But I've got some um, bit of filing there. Swap the other one around. Now, if you find that this is moving, which is okay, we're going to show you a trick. If it's on a nice sturdy platform, get a wet cloth again. So it doesn't move. This is for people at home. So we've done the scissors. We're gonna get our chef knife. Rub it through. Now these are nice and sharp. See how it's grabbing? Now make sure that your fingers aren't pointing out and you pull that through. And then we have nice, sharp, clean knives. Always use a sharpened knife. As I said, it can cause more damage from a, a blunt knife. Now, that is probably the basic set that you require in your kitchen each and every day. If you've got more calls for, the, for other knives, I can show you what a filleting knife looks like or a boning knife. But a basic kit should have at least these five items or six items. And it would be great to have them. As I said, the more you grow up, the more knives, more steak knives that you get in your knife set. Um, but you don't need to get all your knives unless you're replacing your steak knife set. It doesn't matter what brand. It is personal choice. It could be a Japanese brand or Australian brand. It doesn't matter. Do not stress about it. It's like shopping at Ikea. Do not want the fights at home because you were talking about knives. So what I'm saying is, 
choose a block that's going to have all the knife needs that you want for your family needs and stuff that you do at home if you're not used to knives then just buy what you're comfortable with but these six knives plus a knife sharpener should be your most basic of your kit you can buy in block or a magnetic knife strip to put it on your wall nicely or also buy knife covers it doesn't matter you've got six fantastic tools that you can use in your kitchen this is for home chefs or passionate foodies if you do uh, your skills are a little bit more advanced then maybe I suggest going to a crafted knife like a Japanese handmade knife because it is unbelievable but if you're not in that space a great set of knives with these hopefully that answers all your questions if not please reach out to me on all my social media platforms i'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have especially on knives and knife sets and lots of great places out there where you can get some amazing knife sets and shop around it's like buying a car you want the ones that are going to be comfortable that are fit in your hands that actually do the job and sometimes knives the more they go the more expensive they are, the harder they are to sharpen. So just remember that. Any questions are nice, come and see me. Um, as I said, didn't endorse a brand, but uh, come and watch my cooking tips. I've got more coming. Thank you for all your amazing content that you've been asking for. Yes, I will eventually get to things like air fryers and all the fun stuff. And yes, I've got some vegan recipes, but keep watching and we're always gonna have these great cooking tips. Bye for now.